How's it going, America History students? This is Mr. Bell coming back at you with another video lesson. So today we're going to cover American History 1, Unit 7, Section 3, Section 4. Not as long as 7.1 and 7.2. I think when Unit 7 is done, which is Civil War and Reconstruction, you're going to have, I think, four video lessons. And that's probably about the second of the fourth for Unit 7. And I definitely want to break it up and not overload you with some of this stuff. Okay, so we're going to talk about some of the powers Lincoln used to kind of keep control of the disorder from the Civil War and the 11 states seceding from the Union. Habeas corpus, this is your right to be told if you are under arrest, are you being detained? And if you are under arrest, then why are you under arrest? What is the charge of the crime? So habeas corpus was suspended by President Lincoln during the Civil War. And one of the reasons he did this was he wanted to prevent things like draft riots from killing the morale of the northern soldiers. So when riots would get out of control, protests turned to riots, violence, people dying, property damage, he would have these people locked up and he would not tell them why they're under arrest wouldn't give them a trial. They would be free to go after the Civil War was over. Uh, and he suspended habeas corpus during the Civil War. Now, Lincoln, looking back, is one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. I don't think many people would argue that fact. But in the moment, especially during the beginning of the Civil War, he was seen by many as a tyrant, even by some in the North, as abusing his power, such as suspending the right uh, to habeas corpus. So, uh, this is something that he felt he needed to do. Uh, it also helped him in preventing Maryland, which was a slave state, from seceding from the Union. Remember, Virginia, the capital of the Confederacy, Richmond, and D.C. is tucked in between Virginia and Maryland. If they both would have seceded, uh, then D.C. would have been surrounded, which is why you see habeas corpus suspended, which is why you see the use of martial law both in the lead-up and during the early days of the American Civil War. The Emancipation Proclamation. If you ask most people what ended slavery, they will tell you it's the Emancipation Proclamation. They are halfway right. So, the Emancipation Proclamation was an executive order. Executive orders are convenient, but often not long-lasting. So, an executive order allows the president to unilaterally write a law. In this case, President Lincoln, Emancipation Proclamation ended slavery. The only catch is the next president, whoever that may be, takes over, and they can undo every single executive order with the flick of a pen, just as easy as the previous president wrote the executive order. So while in the moment this ended slavery, Lincoln knew to prevent future presidents from bringing it back, he needed to do something a little bit more impactful which is where you're going to see him push and eventually get the 13th Amendment of the Constitution, which is going to be not undoable. The 13th Amendment of the Constitution, of course, bans slavery. There would have to be another amendment to undo that amendment, and that was going to be virtually impossible at that point. But more on the 13th Amendment later. The Gettysburg Address. So the Battle of Gettysburg is the turning point of the American Civil War. I'm going to skip ahead and we'll, we'll actually cover the battle in 7.5. But just for a frame of reference, you kind of see the death toll there. Uh, this is when the North begins to win the war after the South dominated the first half of it. Uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. We're going to talk about the specifics of the battle. But here, while we're talking about especially politically the impact Lincoln had, uh, the Gettysburg Address, so I'm not going to read it to you. It's a very short address. It's effective. Uh, you can. It's part of a reading activity we're doing within this unit. I encourage you to read it on that reading activity, then just go to YouTube and find someone reading the Gettysburg Address because it really is quite powerful. And it's short and sweet. It's one of the shortest uh, addresses that a president ever has given. A lot of people remember Lincoln for his speeches, but most of them at both inaugurations and especially the Gettysburg Address, were rather short speeches compared to the speeches you had before and some of the speeches you have today from presidents. The main message of the Gettysburg Address is that these people who died for the everlasting cost of freedom shall not have died in vain, that this nation 
need to set forth on a new birth of freedom for all people, including African Americans in the fight, of course he's referencing the fight to finish the war and end slavery. We can't let these people who died at Gettysburg die for no reason. So four score and seven years ago, of course, is how it starts out. The score is 20 years ago, so he's referencing 87 years ago. That is the founding of the United States. The 54th Regiment. So these were black soldiers from the north who were recruited to fight for the Union. And they were also former slaves who escaped from the south to the north who would fight for the Union. But mainly they're northern blacks, most of which were not slaves. And they had to be convinced by people, sometimes like Sojourner Truth, to fight for uh, the Union. Because a lot of African Americans in the North never were slaves, didn't have family that were slaves. They experienced racism daily, but not slavery as far as seeing the god-awful institution up close and personal. But once you start to see a trickle of initial African American participation in the Union Army, uh, the, the floodgates open, you see more and more and more and more as the war goes on. The first, however, all-black regiment, of course, this time you still got segregation in the military, and it's going to be that way until Truman gets rid of it after World War II. Uh, the 54th Mass, what they're going to be is the very first all-black regiment within the United States military. Let's look at 7.4, it's really short. This is resistance to the Civil War, draft riots, things of that nature. Copperhead. These were nicknames given to Northern Democrats. Remember, this time Democrats, the more conservative party, Republicans, the more liberal party, and they favored allowing the South to secede. They're like, hey, not our problem. They're not mess. Just we don't want to fight in this war. It, we don't believe in slavery. We don't want to have slaves. They say, of course, the fear is that slavery, the money that's going to be made through it. Uh, through the free labor you're essentially getting, and of course will become a slave country instead of a country with slave states. That's Lincoln's fear. He says, let them secede. It's not our problem. Of course, that's a feeling you have uh, with many people who experience a time of crisis in the U.S. If it doesn't affect them directly, they can't see the pain and suffering that's causing, then they say, not my problem. That's what the Copperheads were. Northerners who said, mm, just let the South secede from the Union. Draft riots were uh, a big problem. In any type of war, you have protests to, to drafts. If there is a draft, like in the Vietnam War, for example, if there is a draft. Uh, however, this was the beginning of that resistance to a military draft because this saying here, this war is a rich man's war and a poor man's fight, will go on to be echoed from Civil War, uh, draft protests slash riots through Vietnam draft protests slash riot. Uh, you had a lot of these in northern cities. They're like, hey, we don't own slaves. We don't believe in slavery. Why do we have to go fight? Uh, and Lincoln will use martial law. He will use the suspension of habeas corpus to keep a lot of these people under control. Now, 7.5 is going to look at the key battles. I think that's a section uh, that deserves its own video. So we'll do two more videos on Unit 7, 7.5, the battles. And 7.6, we'll get into Reconstruction. Thank you. If you have any questions, please email me at bsbell at clevelandcountyschools.org. Thank you. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Social distance.